Okay, I'm gonna get on the weirdest of all soapboxes. When I started Bioware as a programmer, we were using Microsoft Studio in the standard settings. What that means is warnings are warnings and errors are errors in the compiler. So if you do something that will make it not compile, it doesn't compile. If you do something that it's looking at and thinking, mm, are you sure about that? It gives you a warning in your compiler window, but otherwise it keeps going and still builds the thing. That game had tons and tons of warning during development hundreds and hundreds of them just accumulating. In most compilers, you can set it up so that warnings are treated as errors. So if you are doing something like shoving a float into an integer without doing appropriate casting, rather than just giving you a warning and continuing on, it actually will fail to compile and give you an error that you have to fix. You might just fix it by casting it, but you might realize that, oh no, actually this is a problem. I need to, to address this. And we made that switch and it was a very convulsive change to do that. You have to now go through your code base, which has hundreds of warnings and fix them all. And uh, it's a huge pain in the ass. And then you end up with a game that now compiles again. But the end result is now you have a code base that's actually explicitly cleaned up. And because now all warnings are treated as errors, the compiler is forcing the game to stay in that state. And because all warnings are treated as errors, the game won't compile if there are any warnings. So the game can never get into a state of being full of warnings. And my soapbox is, I think this is something that should be applied more broadly within game development. Most teams that have some sort of tool set that have warnings that that tool set fires that says your texture is too big on this tiny polygon thing or you're, you are missing the speaker for this conversation, or you have set a damage for your damage ability or whatever, like just warnings all over the place. Additionally, in the game itself, you are going to also have warnings where you are telling people that someone has left the valid walk mesh or the game dropped below 30 frames a second or what have you. My aggressive soapbox is to say that I would argue that for most of these warnings, most dev teams would actually be better off if they converted those warnings into errors. What tends to happen during game development is those warnings accumulate and accumulate and accumulate and you have hundreds or thousands of them. And at that point, they've lost all usefulness because if I am a dev and I introduce a new warning, I'm not going to see it amongst all of the noise. And that warning might have allowed me to avoid a very obvious bug because maybe I forgot to set a speaker on the conversation. And now that I've put that conversation in and it's going to sit in the game until it gets tested by a tester who is then going to file a bug that says that there's no speaker ass assigned to this, whereas the tool set warning could have avoided that in the first place. But because the number of warnings is so high, it's not possible for me to address it, or it's not practical for me to see it and address it when I'm doing development. If on the other hand, that was an error, and I put this in and the game stops building because of this thing that I just did, then we are in a different state of affairs. Because it was an error, and all the other things were errors, the game had to be in a relatively clean state in the first place. I know that if there's an error in the build, it must be caused by something that I did because I started with something that built and it doesn't build anymore. It must have been an action I took that caused it to fail to build. So I'm forced to address it immediately. It forces the build into a cleaner state. Moving from warnings to errors is a huge undertaking. And often the number of warnings in your build process, in your game, is going to dwarf anything that I've ever seen in a code compilation. It's probably something you need to do pretty early if you're gonna do it, because otherwise you're gonna rapidly pass the point of it being possible to do, because the amount of effort required to clean it all up is going to be so enormous. But if you do it early, I believe strongly that it's going to result in you having a much cleaner build going forward because the game is forced to be in a tidier state. So that's for pipeline warnings. But what about warnings in the game itself? Should those also be errors? Should they be fatal asserts that caused your game to crash? That's a bit trickier because if I'm the developer that's working on a piece of content, 
and I have added a piece of content and I know the game is in a clean state. And when I'm doing my preliminary testing, the game crashes, then I can have confidence that I'm the one that introduced that crash. But it's a lot harder to have that confidence because it's much less likely that I can be certain that the entire game has been completely tested. It's much less likely that I can be certain that what I'm seeing is caused by me and not caused by someone else. And if I don't see a crash and then I check my content in and then someone else encounters the warning that I introduced that I didn't catch in my testing, then what we have is we've we've broken the build. The build is now not working for anyone. So in the case of warnings that are in the game itself, it's a lot harder to justify warnings as errors. Maybe there's a scheme where the warnings that are applicable to the content I'm working on are considered errors during my process of testing. But then when it gets out into the broader testing environment, those are suppressed. Or maybe you have the ability to surface only the warnings that are relevant to my processes in order to reduce that spam. But it's hard to justify bringing the entire build down for everyone because of a very minor warning that escaped testing from one of the developers. I do not like defaults and most parameterized inputs. Defaults are essentially saying, don't think about this thing. We'll deal with it for you. And in most cases, you actually want the developer to think about that thing. I'm not quite so strongly holding to that belief as I am to make all warnings errors, but I do think that it is something to consider as well. Is, is it really necessary for you to have a default? I've actually avoided huge numbers of bugs in coding by adding a parameter to a function, not including a default, and then by going through every single compiler error that was caused by that missing new parameter, had to think about how it was being used and realizing that, oh, there are circumstances under which what I would have said as a default is inappropriate. If I had just provided a default, the game would have compiled and those errors would have been introduced into the code. Similarly, if you are putting in defaults for a lot of your scripting, for a lot of your data entry, you have the risk of just not engaging with the property in a way that is useful. This is a little bit softer because there are situations where the default is so universal that there are, the exception is, is in such a minority that it's worth having a default. So I'm not going to say purge all defaults from your game. I avoid them, but I think there's a certain amount of opinion in this space. Now, warnings as errors, I guess, similarly to soften my stance a little bit, there may be things where you want to transition from, from nothing to warnings to errors. If you are dealing with performance, for example, because you may work in a development process where assets go in, they get shaken down, they get placed, they get moved around, and only at that point do you spend the time to figure out the performance implications. Having errors that are firing that are telling you that you are over performance, not particularly useful. In fact, it's blocking your development because you're going through a process where performance is going to dip and you are finishing up your iteration and then you're going to push the performance back up the other side. But I guess the question I would ask in that case is, are the warnings useful either? Because you're getting warnings saying you, you are over metric, you need to address this thing or that thing. Is that useful when you're in the middle of iteration? No, you're just going to ignore them. And then when you are ready to deal with it, maybe you're better off having them come up as errors. But a process like that does violate my previous statement because you allowed people to check things in that violated your testing in some manner and only came back to address them later. So there are exceptions to my dogma, I suppose, to say that maybe you can't always do all warnings as errors but in those cases, maybe what you actually want is the ability to disable those warnings, except when you are specifically explicitly going about the process of testing for performance.
Warnings and Errors do allow you to keep a cleaner build and a cleaner game. If you aren't addressing warnings, why are you firing them all off and polluting the data that other people might be using for other purposes? Clean it up, keep it as clean as possible to have these debug strings serve some useful purpose. Otherwise, what's the point? The earlier in the process that you can catch a mistake and fix it, the better. So if you can catch it in the pipeline so that it is caught and fixed before it ever gets checked in, that's better. If you can catch it in the process of initial developer side testing and fix it before it gets checked in, less good, but still better. If it gets into the main code base and caught by a QA person, the closer to when it, the bug was created that it is fixed, the less effort it will usually take to fix. So moving your testing sooner in your pipeline into the actual process of asset creation, the more of that you can do, the better the results you're going to get. But to do that, you can't just fire some warnings in your pipelines because as those accumulate, for very logical seeming reasons, the warnings are going to rapidly become useless to anybody. So if you're going to move your testing earlier into your process, into asset creation, you're going to have to take some pretty extreme measures, such as making warnings into errors and forcing people to fix them before they're allowed to check things in. A special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you're interested in becoming a member or joining our Patreon, there's a link to that down in the description. We also have merch. This is the High Tia on the High Seas hoodie. There is a link to that in the video as well. What are some of your harsher dev opinions that are maybe hot takes? Share some of those with me. Let's, let's air out all of our very dogmatic stances. I will see you again soon. Thank you.